Welcome to Nicholas 11x12. Today I'd like to do an interesting experiment. Do we actually really need thermal paste and how much of a difference is there when using cheap or expensive paste or to make it even more interesting without any paste at all? That's going to be an exciting short experiment. Well, testing it all took me quite a while, but I thought, hey, you might want to know. Here we are. Thermal paste showdown time. I'll be using three thermal paste tubes in different price categories. Entry level, mid range, as well as high end. Oh, and of course I'll be using the invisible one too, so nothing, no paste at all. This experiment wouldn't have been possible without the help of Cooler Master, who kindly provided all the thermal paste for this test. Thanks a lot for that and for the nice t-shirt. Cooler Master, make it yours. Nice. For the high-end segment, they hooked me up with their new Master Gel Maker Nano that comes in at about 10 US dollars. Mid-range E1 IC Essential about 3 dollars and V1 IC Value, the entry-level paste at about 2 dollars. The prices are depending on the shop you're actually buying from. This is not a review, that's why it's good having paste in different price categories by just one brand. We avoid adding another variable. The air I'm using to cool for the final test costs roughly 0 dollars, free. For the test system, I'm using my trusty Intel i7-4770K CPU, overclocked of course, and to cool it, the Cooler Master Neptune 240 MAIO water cooler. The fans in that cooler are spinning at 100% for this test. All that installed on the Testbench Cooler Master provided me some time ago. Man, do they help me out there. Thanks. But now let's take a look at the temperature results, shall we? So clearly, these are some interesting results. What may come as no surprise to many of you is the use or no use of any thermal paste. But I'll be honest with you, I kinda was expecting a bit different results, at least no CPU throttling. But yeah, I was wrong and I do not recommend trying this with your processor. You see the things I'm doing for you. But yes, there certainly is a remarkable performance difference between cheaper and more expensive thermal paste as seen in the charts. The high-end paste did in fact perform really, really well, but the mid-range paste wasn't all that far behind actually, probably making it the ideal choice to sweet spot for many. My i7-4770K, however, is not the ideal processor to test thermal paste or coolers in general, as it doesn't dissipate heat all that well. So in terms of temperatures, we could end up with a wider gap between thermal paste and different price ranges. Which means it does make sense going for expensive paste if you want the best possible cooling performance. And when paying that much for your CPU cooler, why save on a paste that improves heat conductivity and could lead to at least 5 degrees lower results with the same exact cooler? Something you should avoid, however, are cheap pastes. Although Cooler Master's entry-level value paste did perform better than many other cheap pastes, I wouldn't really Really bother getting any in that price range. For just a bit more you can get noticeably better performance out of your cooling setup. This means it's not always up to the CPU cooler alone to perform. Decent thermal paste can make a difference too. And there's really not much else that can be said here, as I want to keep this video short. Hopefully you enjoyed it and found this experiment somewhat educational. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.